Hello, Time Itself here with part 2 of my Gamer's Guide to True Skill. This guide is aimed at giving gamers a better understanding of Microsoft's True Skill system and how it fits in their favorite games. No proficiency in calculus or advanced statistics required. In part 2, we'll talk about what a skill rating actually represents and how the True Skill system is tuned for different games. As noted in part 1, when two players face off, the higher rated player is only more likely to win, not certain. Rating systems attempt to tie the difference in player ratings to the increased likelihood of winning. With True Skill, we'll talk about the number of points difference between players so that we expect the higher rated player to win roughly 80% of the time. This is the first tuning parameter of the True Skill system. Each group of players who we can separate by that 80-20 split is called a link in the skill chain. Because the true skill system rates players from 0 to 50, the number of ratings points that represents a link in the skill chain needs to be found and tuned. Now, the length of the skill chain could be different, not just for every game, but also for each playlist or game mode in each game. If that number for the 80-20 difference is small, the game is said to have a long skill chain, because there are many links, and be a high skill game. If the number is high, it has a short skill chain and is said to be more luck based. As an example, in Age of Empires 3, a difference of about 4 true skill rating points corresponded to an 80% chance of the higher rated player winning. Um, but these terms, luck-based or high-skill games, are a bit misleading, so let me say a bit more before you tell me how your favorite game has the longest skill chain ever. A game like poker may feature a significant amount of randomness and thus luck, and require many hands and games to be played to decide the better player. But we get back to this needing an 80-20 difference in winning to add another link to our skill chain. I'd say that a good part of this isn't just how the top tier players stack up, but how many levels of noobs you can establish. My guess is that games with long skill chains also tend to be those with long, steep learning curves. In part 1, we talked about true skills two values for every player, rating and uncertainty about that rating. Something that I need to be very clear about is that the result of any game will not increase a player's uncertainty number. Either the current ratings correctly predicted the outcome and the system is more certain of a player's rating, or an unexpected outcome occurred and the system now has more information to bake better ratings. Since player skill levels can and do change, true skill adds another parameter that only serves to increase each player's uncertainty before calculating new updated ratings after each game. This is what keeps the system dynamic. The amount of uncertainty added is too high, the whole system won't settle down, and players' ratings will fluctuate wildly. Too low, and players find that their once accurate rating fails to match current level of skill. Something to note is that because conservative ratings are what players see, as covered in Part 1, if the result of a game was already very likely, a player with a much higher rating winning, the reduction in uncertainty from the result of the game may not be enough to offset the uncertainty added as part of every ratings calculation, and the winning player may see a slight decrease in conservative rating. Often, as part of tuning and maintaining the rating system, this will be prevented from happening, but you may see it when some pro goes noob bashing. Rating always goes up for wins and down for losses, but in some situations, the conservative rating may not. We've also hit on one of the interesting parts of designing a rating system. That is, while we've been talking about the number of rating points for a link in our skill chain, what happens when players who are two links apart play? What about players half a link apart? These assumptions are built into the design of the system. But True Skill does have one additional way to handle this in yet another tuning parameter. That is, the probability of a tie where neither player wins. Usually, with a large enough sample of games, this can just be the percentage of ties that have happened in previously played games. If two nearly equally skilled players face off and a tie is a possible result, the system will gain more information. This gets back to the whole only using wins or losses to update ratings. In fact, when a game doesn't result in a tie when it could have, gives more weight to the result. So, the parameter for the probability of a tie needs to go into every new rating calculation. Something to note, 
one of the assumptions of the true skill system is that the game has no practical skill ceiling. For example, Tic-Tac-Toe has a skill ceiling. Most people who play can expect to tie every single game. In the end, players within one link on the skill chain should see a reasonable correlation between difference in rating and likelihood of winning. It's when players three or more links apart face off that the system can act strangely. The odds of the lower rated player winning the game outright are very small as far as the system is concerned. Instead, other issues like bugs or connectivity problems are just as likely to be a factor in online multiplayer games that will influence the result as the player's respective skills. The true skill system doesn't just work out of the box. There are a few parameters that need to be tuned to make it work as intended. The true skill rating system is great at quickly getting players rating to their proper values. However, in some cases, it can be painfully slow to change after that. I hope this has helped give some additional insight into the true skill system. Join me next time for part three, where we get to put all of this together and take on the phrase, get my 50. If you'd like to know more about the true skill system, check out the links in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.